from anywhere in the world, if you mention Buffalo, New York, probably the first thing that come out of their mouth is chicken wings. Right behind us is the Anchor Bar, which is commonly known as the birthplace of the modern Buffalo-style chicken wing. The story goes that in 1964, a bunch of friends were super hungry. They came over and asked, can you make us something to eat? And the owner, Teresa Bellissimo, threw these chicken wings in the deep fryer, served them with the hot sauce. Thus, a legend was born here in Buffalo, New York. I think they definitely were the first one to cut the wings in half and to serve it with the hot sauce, but certainly chicken wings were definitely being served in Buffalo prior to 1964. No one was selling chicken wings in Buffalo before John Young. He was always innovative, always thinking of something. He introduced the city to chicken wings. He says, the first day I opened the door, I realized I had created a monster. People came from everywhere in droves to try the wings with the mumbo sauce. Traditional Buffalo-style wings are Frank's hot sauce cut with butter, but it's, that's like a differentiation. There's the mumbo wing and the Buffalo-style wing. Mumbo sauce was like a tangy, sweet barbecue sauce. You don't truly know Buffalo until you've tried the mumbo wing. John Young just brought his knowledge of what he cooked or had down south, and they came up north. You know, that's how it was with a lot of black families. John Young definitely paved the way. I noticed that tourists, the first question they had, even before where is the bathroom, is where is the best place to go get chicken wings? Hey, my name is Mark, and I'm the owner of Buffalo Bike Tours. So I started doing bike tours, and then I started doing food tours. That's kind of how I developed this Buffalo Wing Tour. In particular, I was really fascinated with the story of John Young. Ask any older black person in Buffalo who's lived here, you just say John Young, and they, they light up. They know, oh man, wings and things. So we're here at the Broadway Market. We're gonna be making John Young mumbo wings. Well, most people think about buffalo wings with hot sauce and butter, but there's no butter in here. <laughs> this is the original. This is the sauce that John Young made for chicken wings back in the 1960s when he first started. So I have a base already. I'm gonna add to the base, which is a tomato sauce. It's about three different sauces in there. And in here, I have some already blended citric fruit, some peppers to make it a little hot, some other little spices. This is sugar that I'm also gonna add to it to give it some sweetness. What makes John Young wings different is this sauce that we'll put on the stove and let it boil up like a bubbling sensational red lava. My name is Lina Brown Young. My father's name is John Mac Young. He served ribs, chicken, all kinds of chicken, not just wings, chitlins, green jams, macaroni, what people would mostly consider soul food. It's not that he only focused on chicken wings, but once he tried it and it was big, that was a big deal to him. We used a little bit of a, a fry mix. That is what he used back in the 60s. They still sell the same fry mix. If you notice, this is a whole chicken wing. So it has a drumette, what they call the flat, and the tip. Most of them are so like, which I do have a few pieces, they're split, and they count that as a wing. But in actuality, this is a wing. When my father started the chicken wing, this is what he sold, a whole chicken wing. The way John, my father, explained to me back when he was young that they were eating whole chicken wings and this was considered a throwaway part of the chicken. It was not considered a high-end part of the chicken, like the breast or something. So because they were poor, they were eating gizzards, livers, chicken wings, that type of thing. This part of the chicken was considered not really a delicacy like it is today. Most of African-American food was, uh, again, scraps, because that's all we got. My name is George Scott. I'm the uh, World Board member, former president of the Colored Musicians Club and curator of the Colored Musicians Club Jazz Museum. The Colored Musicians Club was once a very popular place where national musicians as well as local musicians would come to after they did their gigs throughout the city. White people would come to the black community check out these clubs, listen to the musicians, and naturally when they sat and taught, they would eat. So a lot of these white musicians got to experience the African-American flavor of food. 
And, you know, so naturally when they went back to their neighborhood, they would tell their friends and stuff, man, they got this stuff, it's called chicken wings. And man, this is, this is great. Eventually, that food was starting to be cooked in other communities. African-Americans didn't get all the prime cuts. You know, that went to the white people or people with money. Well, that was the thing with the chicken. They never got like the chicken breast or thighs. The wings were always left over, but they had to take that and utilize that as a meal to serve your family. That was how they cooked, that's how they ate, and they just kept that going even when they came up north. And he came to Buffalo before I was born. He's from Alabama. So he um, came to Buffalo with his dad to kind of, I guess, open the way up for his family. He came from a big family of 13 children. He came in the 50s. He was a 13 when he got here. So they were hoping that the North would be a better place. And he worked for Bethlehem still for a little bit. And I think his job had got laid off or something, so he start, had to do something. He started selling Blair products, spices, and flavorings. Eventually, the food became bigger than the Blair products and all that. He opened up John Young's Wings and things. And my father had started a little, I guess, little autobiography of his self, of his life. And in 1963, it says that a friend of his named Sam Anderson was a boxer, told him about uh, a person in Washington who was selling chicken wings and told me that's what I should do. He said he took his advice. And that's when chicken wings was um, born in Buffalo, New York. It wasn't so much the chicken wing. Lots of people were selling chicken, but it was the sauce. The sauce was the boss. In those days, chicken was 25 cent per pound. Mm. They're three dollars now, just so you know that. <laughs> so once the grease is hot, be careful. <laughs> so they float. When they float, they're cooked, they're done. The first time I did wings was probably at my dad's restaurant when I was 15 or 16. The restaurant was always steady, but certain times of the day was just busier. But it was never just dull, you know? It was always, people always want to eat. <laughs> so we're gonna sauce the wings. He dipped it completely, took off the excess, and that's how he served buffalo chicken wings. It's kind of funny, because when we, we cook stuff or things like that, we just kind of take it for granted. Nobody thought about putting a patent to it. Throughout our culture, it was always like that. Uh, even music, rock and roll. I mean, that started out as, you know, bebop. Blues was early rock and roll, and uh, the chicken wing was one of those things. Somebody else heard about it or tasted it and said, hey, we can do that over here. I believe what probably hurt my dad was leaving Buffalo. Once he was gone, just kind of people start doing other things, and he wasn't here to really say anything. In the 60s and 70s, probably everywhere, there were just racial things going on. They killed, what, Martin Luther King, and that was a big deal. So there was just a lot of tension, almost like now, <laughs> with some of the racial issues. He left because of the social issues that were going on here, a lot of rioting, that type of thing. You know, I think they just figured it was just better and safer. We left Buffalo, and we ended up living in Decatur, Illinois. He could take his restaurant anywhere, and that's what he did. And probably in the 80s when he came back and realized, you know, that he wasn't getting credit for it. So he just felt, you know, things had kind of calmed down in Buffalo. We were always home, coming home once a year. Buffalo was still a big place for business. So he tried it again. He just wanted to come back to Buffalo and reestablish. People were pretty accepting and glad that he was back. The, original, you know, mumbo wing was back. John Young Chicken Wings was the only chicken wing place in town. And then it was thereafter when he was gone and you had several places that were doing the chicken wings. It's important that Blacks just get credit for what they do because so many times um, it's just not given them. You want people to feel a, a sense of worth, you know? If you never see the credit for what you know, people of color have done, then you think they haven't done nothing. And that's certainly not true. I mean, these people came from a rough beginning. Well, they're trying to just be simple, average Americans like anybody else. That's why you need to at least identify with these food, that at least you can know where you came from. 
and not be stamped as just another person that's on this planet that can be erased at any time. What I would really love it if people thought about buffalo chicken wings, that the first thing come to their mind is John Young chicken wings. I wish, especially before he died, that he had left here knowing that people realize what he did. You know, that, that was, that's sad, even when I think about it now. So we just put his cremains here with his mom and dad. So he was buried here in 98 when, when he passed. Even though they've been gone a long time, just, you know, it just seemed like not long ago you were hearing this laugh. And I do feel that food <laughs> and heritage has a big connection. Food is just so comforting. Even though sometimes it might not be the healthiest, if you, you know, we try to keep our family reunions going and everything, and food is a big part of that. When I eat wings, it always is a reflection of family. How many of you like chicken wings? Raise your hands. How many of you guys like biking? Raise your hands. How many of you had mumbo wings? Try Lina's chicken wings as well as a couple other recipes and dive deep into the gnaws of buffalo uh, legend and buffalo wing history. Recently, I was able to come in contact with Mark Moscato from Buffalo Bike Tours. So over the years, I've had interviews with different people. The local Channel 7 here had, you know, did a story about Black History Month and featured my dad. And so I think Mark maybe saw that. And he was saying that he was involved in this, you know, this bike history tour and the history of the chicken wing. We kind of collaborated on doing a John Young Day. So then he asked me if I could do some wings for him, basically for the tour, you know, let people try the original John Young mumbo wing a few times a week. That was the first time that I was able to put the wings out and the sauce out on a regular because my father hadn't had a restaurant since like 92. Then after the bike season, we did some pop-ups, which is what we're still doing. It's been good working with him. You know, I keep getting, oh my God, mumbo wings are back. I'm so happy, I'm so happy. So my dad would be really happy. He'd be glad that I'm doing it. He'd probably be wanting me to do it on a much larger scale, but I'm sure he'd be quite happy. Today, I'm okay. <laughs> Um, Sometimes just reading back through some of his things. I have some other handwritten things of his. This was a mural, an actual mural that was in his restaurant that was huge. And so we're trying to recreate this mural at the original place where he started at Jefferson and Carlton. John Young, King of Wings. The Buffalo Chicken Wing, that was him. <laughs> oh yeah, he would be happy. Yeah, he would be, he would be happy. That's why I'm glad I'm able to do what I can and at least just keep the memory of, of what he did. <laughs>